station of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the October 19th. Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out, or try to figure out, what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, let those fingers do the walking. That's right. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question and in the tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and check out these markets here on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trading up 67 points, 25,440 is the print. S&P is up two. NASDAQ 100 down four. Russell 2000 getting the kibosh down 14 points. The real kibosh coming inside the uh, semiconductor index off one and six tenths percent or 20 points. Trading out at uh, 1225. Trannies are basically flat. They're off 11 points. The New York Stock Exchange, now that's something to think about. That's trading up uh, $22 out here in the Wilshire, down 33 Spot volatility X trading out at 20 29 That's up $0.23. Cents. Uh, gold is flat. Silver is uh, flat. Lights weight crude up 64 pennies, leading the charge to the dollar, uh, to the upside. It's Google up nearly $6. Procter & Gamble up 6 That's a big move there, 7.5%. PayPal is up. Six Everest Group is up about five. Diego PLC up four dollars and change. To the downside, it is uh, ABMD ABIO Med down twenty bucks or five percent. Intuitive Surgical off thirteen dollars two and a half percent. Sentient Technologies off eleven or fourteen percent. Nvidia down eleven bucks. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense with regard to the struggle. So uh, first, what are we going to do? My, my apology in the den. I was doing two things at once. And doing two things at once, typing in the wrong date. How could that be? But if we do go back in history, and I think it's important to do that for a couple of reasons. And the reason is because uh, typically the way that people, when I say that everything in life happens for us, not to us, what we have to do is take ourselves back to October 19th, 1987. And you will hear it discussed or referred to many times on the financial shows out there, including this one here. And, of course, we all know that was referred to as Black Monday. Uh, what did I, I don't want to do this chart here. I want to, oh, here's what I want to do. I want to go to the actual correct uh, chart out there. Uh, let's put up here. It is. Here's the Dow. If we take a look at this, uh, October 19th, 1987, from actual open to close, it was about a 20% drop out there. But the way that it is discussed, the way that it is framed as, it, if, as if it was just a god-awful day. Now, that's not to say there wasn't a significant amount of wealth that was destroyed on that one session. But what's really not discussed and the way that it should really be framed is it, when things look bleak, Maybe they're not so bleak. Everything in life was happening for us. You do realize, or now you will realize, because here, there's no BS. 
Okay, before Steve, you might have thought, ah, you, just, you wouldn't have the proper perspective. It turns out that October 19th, 1987, or you could have used the following day if you liked, because the low of October 19th was tested for a very short period of time. I mean, a very short period of time. Turns out that was the buy of a lifetime. That was a buy of a lifetime for you, for me, for everybody else out there. But how would we have known that? You see, that low that took place on the 20th, on the following day out there, is a low that has never been seen again. The markets went upside. They're still going upside. Yet it's really referred to as a dark day. And in one hand, it is. But you have to have perspective out here. Now, the cool thing is about that day is how is it that we could have known that that was going to be the buying opportunity of a lifetime? And the only way to have done that, and that's where it just really, how can I say this? It pisses me off when you have folks out there that really don't put it into the proper perspective. Because how could we have known? Maybe we wouldn't have known then, but we sure know now. And maybe those tools that tell us now are tools that can help us guide us into what the markets are doing in the future. You've seen this chart before, but today is an opportunity to always put it in proper perspective out here. You saw what took place on the daily chart, right? So just to make sure, let's just go back to this daily time frame chart. We can see the huge drop. We can see that low was tested. So when the low came in, in essence, on the 19th, or we can say the 20th when it was tested and rejected out there, and it was the buying opportunity of a lifetime. Certainly at this stage, of the, as of the last 35 years out there, guess what? There's another buying opportunity of a lifetime that is also coming. And if we take a look at this chart here, and we just decide to take all of the historical data instead of using a linear chart, and we can get back to a linear chart, but we just turn this to an algorithmic chart so we can properly put the data in perspective, and we draw a trend line off of the September 29th high, or the 1929 high, I should say, and we just connect it to the next high, just a trend line out there. We connect that to the 1966 high, what that tells us is that that drop that we saw for that one single day was nothing more than a retest of a significant trend line that had been broken through back in the, uh, let me give you, this is a uh, quarterly chart out here, back during about the uh, May, June, July quarter of 1986. Oftentimes you break a trend line, you come back, you test it, and you reject it out there. So yeah. For one day, it was Black Monday, but for every day since, it was the buying opportunity of a lifetime, and you just don't hear that discussed out there. Now, you and I, we're not going to be a prisoner of our past. We are going to be a pioneer of our future, and to be a pioneer of our future, we say, well, what does that logarithmic trend line really do for us when we get into where, in essence, we're at now, such as in November of 2016, when it broke through another logarithmic trend line? Yes, my friends, these markets, once we're out of this churning and burning time period out here, another opportunity of a lifetime awaits you. Steve wrote TFA. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's Daily Market Letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. You know, everything in life is about how you frame it. It's all about reframing. It has always been about how you reframe it. You and I watch the same piece of news and watch how people just simply frame things um, in a different way out there. And it, as a pointing case, uh, Mark, as, let me see here. Hold on. Uh, let me see who posted this. Here's a comment inside the uh, den. Yeah, Mark P. He writes... Uh, just from a framing standpoint, uh, just how it, everything feeds in there. And this is how Mark frames things. He says, hey, if you purchase $1,000 uh, worth of shares in Delta Airlines five years ago, you'd have $49 today. Wow, I did not know that, Mark. He also says, hey, look, if uh, you had purchased $1,000 of shares in AIG five years ago, you'd have uh, $33 today. Hmm. He says, if you had purchased $1,000 of shares in Lehman Brothers five years ago, you'd have zero today. Now, that's some pretty good framing, but he doesn't stop there. This guy, he is creative because, it, it, because he said, hey, look, if you purchased $1,000 worth of beer one year ago, he didn't say what kind of beer, though, drank all the beer, then turned in the aluminum can, so clearly no bottles out here, aluminum can beer for the recycle refund, you'd receive 214 bucks. So based on that information, what uh, Mark is going to do, based on the current investment plan, is uh, simply to drink heavily and recycle out there. Now, you, he's calling that his 401 keg program. Keg can't be a kegger. It's got to be aluminum cans out there. So everything in life, folks, is how you frame it, properly frame it. It's all about trying to figure out why is life happening for us, not uh, or happening, you know, for us, not to us out there. And and I know I have shared this with you, you know, uh, um, well, only a half a zillion times because the other half a zillion times is just simply going to take place as well, take place as well. Because look, this is about getting the big picture. We get the big picture correct out here. We can do some amazing things. So I just want to make sure that it's properly framed with you. I'll just provide you with the facts. You decide, you know, what you want to uh, do with it. Now, that blue, uh, that, that trend line that we were looking at on my other chart out there, I've now uh, transitioned over to my A signal set of charts. And the blue diagonal line on the screen out here, I don't have this set right now to the logarithmic trend line, but that, in essence, is what it is. 
and uh, we can see the clear break of it in uh, uh, from a logarithmic standpoint it was back in the 2016 2017 time frame out here this is a monthly chart before we were looking at a quarterly chart out there now it's always possible just like in 1987 that price could pull back and test that trend line i don't say that that's not a possibility and in fact uh, in the early part of September, that was my game plan. I was thinking, you know, that's what likely really was August. It was July, August, September. Uh, I was thinking uh, that's what was the likely outcome. But then uh, on a rainy weekend, I said, uh, well, what happens if I uh, just simply go back to the 87 top and draw a trend line, which uh, was back to the 1985 top, and just see where that trend line goes, just back on the linear scale. Another trend line out there. And voila, all of a sudden, the light bulb started going off. And I was simply surprised to see that the highs in 2000 were contained. That's the green diagonal line on my chart. But what was even more of the surprise was that the breakout that we saw in uh, 2018 above that trend line, um, when we had our correction, in the Dow, this is the Dow that we're taking a look at. That was the Dow that you and I were taking a look at before. That price had pulled back and was just simply testing the breakout of that trend line. So until uh, price closes below that linear trend line, in essence, the test has been done. Now, the test will not be confirmed. It's been, it's been confirmed to the downside. What we haven't seen is the breakout to the upside. And that's the last piece of this puzzle, or that's the next piece of this puzzle, or maybe the next piece of this puzzle. If we see, and we're going into the seasonal time frame where we should see a clear and convincing break of the high that I'm using, the high of January 2018, 26-616-71. We're, we're in that favorable seasonal period, which began last Friday. Now, the decline that we have seen uh, this week was nothing more than a pullback into that trend line. Was it, uh, was it, what, did we hit it exactly? No, you got to give these trend lines just a little bit of wiggle room out there. Just a little bit of wiggle room. And look, if we do break through that, then I have to say we go back and test those April lows. And if we break through that, then we go back and we test that uh, linear, uh, that, uh, that algorithmic trend line out there. But at this stage of the game, support has held. And what I am here to say and share with you, because both of these trend lines have been broken through. And much like on October 19th, as things came to an end, or October 20th, if we had believed in trend lines, and if we had the historical data, and we were mapping things out, you and I would have been saying, this is a buying opportunity. We would not have been weeping. We might would have been scared. There's no doubt. But that's just fear. And that always stands for one of two things, right? False information, false evidence appearing real. Or if it is real, it stands for F, everything and run. In that case, it was false evidence appearing real, which it typically is. This is not false information that you and I are taking a look at. This is just absolute evidence how we can still utilize what took place in 1987 to our advantage today. It is all about reframing. Okay, enough of that. Let's go reframe something else. So what's going on in the markets as we speak today? Dow's up 117, S&P's up 9, the NDX is up 18. Um, you know, so what's going on inside the markets out here? Hey, good question. Great question. Um, the best I can tell, that I can share, that I can see, that I can find, is uh, we're testing, again, the lows of yesterday. Some not totally testing the lows. We can go take a look at what I mean here. My focus, kind of hyper-focus, has been on the NQ chart, NASDAQ chart, and the five-hour time frame chart. And the reason is because it's given us the best bottoming signal, uh, which was taking place right at that seasonal time frame, which was last Friday. And we can see that today still testing, what's testing again the bottom of that profile. Uh, really, the third time down here, or certainly at least the second time down here, the test and rejection. Which brings me to the saying of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. 
And you know what that expression is. If you can't bust them down, you're going to go try and bust them to the upside. So we'll see if, in fact, that is the uh, case out there. Have I studied 2007? Of course, I've studied 2007 out here. Absolutely. They, I, am, I am a student of these uh, markets. It's a, que a question that was posted inside of the uh, Tigers uh, den out there. Um, so uh, with regard to just kind of taking a look at today's action and mentioning, hey, if you can't bust them down, maybe it's going to go try to bust them up. Um, we would just have to go and steal one of Obi-Wan Kenobi's tools. We just have to. We could take a look at the NASDAQ 10-minute chart out here. See the price was moving down with light volume as it was coming into that low from yesterday at 1.40 in the afternoon. We'll get back to just a In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same tfnn.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new tfnn.com now and experience all the upgrades. tfnn.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we'll see if uh, Stevie's black box uh, knows anything out here. If we put up the intraday time frame charts just to try to get a feel uh, for any signals that are forming out here, if we take a look, and this one just takes a look at a 30-minute time frame, so really hyper, you know, uh, focused uh, time time wise to a one hour to a two hour and a five hour, and uh, the focus really should be in the the first four 
uh, rows up here where we take a look at the SENQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. And, uh, Mike, I know you're you're uh, long the Russell 2000. You do have some bottom signals in the 30-minute, the one-hour, the five-hour. Um, but uh, the Russell 2000 is certainly struggling. The NQ has got one for the uh, one hour. It does for the five. It's not showing here because of the move that we had a couple of days ago out there. Uh, but the pattern still exists. Um, so you can see some some bottom signals, meaning price was moving lower, doing less relative energy on that last push down. Uh, we were talking about just stealing one of uh, Tom's uh, tools, which is to take a look at the 10-minute time frame chart. So really ultra short term and just trying to measure the volume as price was coming back and testing a swing point, which the swing point low from yesterday, 140 in the afternoon, there were 14,000, almost 15,000 contracts. And that was being tested with 14 and 12,000 contracts at the 1240 time frame out there. And really we would see the same type of thing, although we didn't get down and actually test the swing point if you look at the ES mini. The swing point in the ES mini also took place at 140 and there was 55,000 contracts. And as price was pushing down, never got down to it, was 36,000, 42,000, 33,000. Um, so, you know, not the volume necessarily to push through. But at this stage, quite frankly, until price is able to take out its prior swing point high from 10 o'clock this morning, um, anything goes, so to speak. So Mike wanted us to take a look at the uh, IWM specifically. If we go take a look at the IWM specifically out here, what we're going to see is so far about 18 million shares. It's trading down a dollar. Here's the daily time frame out here. Uh, what's it doing? Today's an inside day, not really providing you with a lot of information out here. Uh, if we turn on the volume metric for you, when price pushed down here on the trading day of October the 11th, uh, there was about 522 million shares down there. Yesterday's pushed down about with 328. Uh, you are not out of the woods inside the, oh, this is the Dow. Jeez, what am I doing here? What am I doing? I thought I pushed the IWM. I, my apologies there, Mike. You're right. You saw the Dow because you saw what I had up on the screen out there. So what was I talking about? But the swing point that is trading into back on October the 12th, 53 million shares. And yesterday's push down was 31 million shares. Today about 18. But, you know, as long as it's trading in here, Mike, trading in here means the October 12th high, IWM 155.76 to low, 151.88. Even with light volume, price can go ahead and test that low of 151.88 out there. So no clear and convincing signal, so to speak, inside the Russell 2000. If we go take a look at the daily equity futures contract for the Russell, no new profile forming out here. There's just no, there's no good news. And you know how I like to reframe things really just like to reframe things the way that we see them. And the way that we see them is there's just no set of profile information, daily at least, to provide you a support. That's not the case with the NQ as an example, or the Dow as another example, or even the ES as another example. You see, in the case of the Dow, we know that support should be 25077, the bottom of its daily profile. We're trading above the center of the profile, 25445. You want you to trade above the center or below the center? If you're above the center, you can rise rise to the top. The cream always rises to the top. 25814 would be the number. Inside the NQ, that profile is huge. It's gargantuan. It is giganto out there, which says that if you really can't bust them down, the NQs do have the possibility of moving up to 7544 or 7464, the top and center of its box out there. All that we can say about the the NQ on a daily time frame, there's many. All we can say is that what we have here is one, two, three, four. Now, yeah, um, we have four set five or five higher lows until yesterday. We saw that pullback, but still we have, in essence, higher lows on the daily time frame for the uh, NQ. We have that same pattern, by the way, inside the Dow, and we have that same pattern inside of the ES, albeit yesterday did make a lower low than the prior day, but it didn't take out the day before that. So I don't know if that means anything, might mean something, but here's what we do know. Inside the uh, ES resistance 2813, 
We talked about that in the NQ. We gave you resistance uh, inside the Dow. And right now for you, Mike, resistance is going to be 1606. And that's all we have. I don't have any signal that there's going to be a, a new profile that forms. But anything can happen out there. Uh, Mr. Bill wrote in. And Mr. Bill wrote in. And he, Mr. Bill said, and I don't know where he got this from. I just don't know. Oh, maybe I do. Mr. Bill said, someone once said that the Q's reverse on big volume. Still true. Well, I think what I said, if you're referring to moi, uh, what I said is the Q's make bottoms with volume. Yes. Now, just to more easily summarize, to show you the facts, are we just simply go to a weekly time frame chart. That way it kind of cuts out the noise out there. And if we take a look at last week, the volume last week inside the Q's, one of the highest we've seen. Well, the, the, in 2018, we saw a bit of a higher high. That happened to be the February low. The February low out there had volume of 522 million shares. I like to kind of use a threshold bill, um, the 300 and about 300 million shares, 330, something along those lines out there. If you take a look at the volume in April, April 2nd, 318 million shares, a higher low last week. A higher low from that, um, you know, uh, we had a, a low that formed out here with uh, 315 million shares on June 26, 2017. I think my own needs to slide over just one bar out there. I think that is that. Yeah. Um, you know, if you take a look at the low that formed out here in February 2016, 350 million. If you take a look at the low that formed out here August in 2015, 449 million. You kind of get the picture. It's not that Stevie says that um, the Q's form lows with volume. It's that the actual chart of the Q's says that it forms lows with volume. I don't know how else to uh, cut it. Hey, you know, no matter how you slice it, there is always two sides to every piece or every slice of bread. So let's go out to New York, where I think it's freezing cold, at least uh, based on Florida perspective, and speak with Maria. Maria, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Steve? Doing very well. How cold is it up there? Oh, it's not that cold. No, it's not that cold. It's warm. It's a bit cooler than uh, Florida, that's for sure, but it's not that bad. No? Is it? Hey, Maria, we're going to a break. Would you be kind and realize we were, we were just coming up on the hard break? Would you be yes. kind enough to hold on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Absolutely. We'll be back from, with Maria, who says it's not that cold in New York. I'm thinking it's in the 50s. That would be cold for Stevie here. But we'll be right back with Maria. We're going to take a look at the NQ in just a few. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Jason Path has just launched his weekly newsletter, The Quantitative Edge, available only at TFNN.com. Right now, you can sign up for Jason's outstanding weekly report, including midweek updates whenever warranted, with a 30-day money-back guarantee included, so you have nothing to risk. Jason develops his trade recommendations by creating an ensemble of predictive and mathematical models trained on data by leveraging a variety of techniques, including market-based computer simulations. Jason then combines these 
these sophisticated predictive and analytical models with deeply researched macro outlooks to identify opportunities in a number of different markets for traders to act on. Whether you're looking to trade futures, equities, commodities like crude oil and gold, forex or cryptos, Jason covers it all. Sign up for Jason Paff's weekly trading newsletter right now by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the quantitative edge under the newsletters tab. TFNN.com, educating investors. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Uh, so let's go to New York and speak with Maria. Uh, Maria, again, thanks for holding. I appreciate it. And you wanted to take a look at the NQs. Uh, tell me what you're looking at, how yes, I can help uh, you, you. You've been covering it a lot, uh, Stephen. Thank you very much. I just have a question because today is Friday. Um, yes. And so we are going to go uh, looking at the weekly uh, candle, right? And so if what I'm, I'm wondering, because I, I see the same thing as you, which is possibility to, to rise to 75, 40-ish or something like that. But yes. the problem is that I think if if this candle close where where we are or slightly lower, it's just a, it's not it's just an inside week in a sense uh, relative to the big large red candle that we had last week, and it's not providing that much confidence that um, we are bursting out of lows. Don't you think? So let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here. And um, from a weekly perspective, I think, so yes, it is an inside bar. There's no question. And, and, and I would think that what Maria is trying to say to each of us, that when we have an inside bar, it typically means it's a continuation in the direction that it came from. Was that, in essence, yeah. is that a... Okay, so there's no question that, yes, this week is an inside bar, um, you know, to a certain extent, no matter how we cut it. The only other piece of evidence right now that you and I have with regard to the NQ on a weekly time frame is uh, right here. And let me just uh, blow up the chart, so to speak. And what the NQ also has done here recently, now this was on October 11th, is that still part of this week? Uh, no, that was last week. Mm. Um, this green horizontal line going across the top is the actually top of the weekly profile. Uh, I could add the other um, profiles for the center and the uh, bottom of the box. But at this stage here, so we have competing patterns, I would say. And inside the NQ, price fell back to support and rejected uh, that and, and held as support at this stage of the game. And we also have the bottom of the daily profile that is lined up with the top of the weekly profile. So that's 69.8735. So do we go back down there and test it? We very well could. Has anything fallen apart when we take a look at the NQ at this stage of the game? No. If the NQ closes under 69.87, then it opens up the next targets of 67.23 and 64.51 uh, out there. Um, so that's when I start taking a look at uh, what has actually transpired over the last couple of weeks inside the NQ. You know, I, I also see that, too, which is price just coming back to a level of support and holding on a weekly time frame. Okay. So you yes? know, it doesn't – because I, I was hoping 
in a sense that the market will rally a tiny bit so that I could sell it again. And, um, and this morning was giving us the opportunity, um, and but then everything faded. So I was thinking, is it going to be, like, can we see in the next couple of hours a very strong movement upward so that to retest maybe the highs of today or eventually sure. 7,300? Or there's not enough stamina on that market, so then it means that there's trouble ahead for next week, right? There, yeah, there, there may be trouble ahead. Uh, what I also know is, and one of the reasons why I've paid such close attention to the NQ to try to use as a signal for each of us out there, is one, recognizing the seasonal pattern of the market, whether it's the election cycle or just the annual seasonal cycle. That says a bottom should have formed uh, around October 13th. Well, that turned out to be last Friday. And one of the great signals in 2018 on a five-hour time frame has been this Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal, and all the black arrows point to those bottoms. And we had one of those patterns form um, last Friday. It's still active. It's very choppy. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it also is still in place out here to suggest that a bottom. Because what, what also occurred was, you know, we had an A to B equals CD pattern out here. Maria, if you and I go take a look at kind of the short term, shorter term charts, we look at a 60-minute a, a, um, chart. Off of that same bottom out here, there was an A to B equals CD to the upside, as well as one of those famous seventh wave moves and an RMI top on the 60 minute time frame. So it made that, so yeah, that made sense that there was gonna be a pullback. What did it do today? It made an A to B equal CD to the downside. And now you've got the RMI bottom signal. It hasn't been confirmed just yet, but here's your one to 1.272 A to B equal CD to the downside. We also happen to have our RMI signal. So this is saying there is that possibility that we do see the, the NQ move to the upside, but we need to get that bullish reversal candle, which we don't have at this yeah. Time, but here we can see patterns repeating one after the other, and this one would be the Gertley buy pattern uh, from that move of of last uh, week, um, you know, on the shorter term time frame. So the only thing that I think you and I can conclude is on a weekly basis the NQ held support, which was the week of its TAS market profile. For those of us that like to use those, I think they're excellent tools out there. And on a more of an intraday basis, we can see the choppiness of the patterns, but these are all patterns that you and I utilize to help us understand what the markets are doing. And right now, we have some bottom signals on that one-hour time frame chart for the NQ. Uh, they haven't confirmed yet. Mm, so, okay. you know, that's 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 kind of that's what I'm that's what I'm seeing out here. But if you're, you know, I don't know if you want to focus on the shorter term or are you just really trying to stay with the weekly as being your set of signals? No, uh, basically, I'm trying to find a way to. Um, I would like to reestablish shorts. I think this market is going is going uh, much lower. Um, yes, it's just that here it doesn't make sense because it doesn't give you really a good risk reward um we still have a lot of possibility to cover two or three hundred points up on the nq and probably even like 70 point up on the es yeah. so i'm not taking the risk here um but at the same time i was really puzzled by how fast we went down from i mean it's true that it was a good uh, d point to sell this morning but um it retraced completely what he had gained yesterday um, sure. And, sure. So, and it's friday and it's the end of the week and the week hasn't been Super performing so far. So I'm wondering if, um, if uh, well, it's uh, really what I uh, should look at. But it's it's uh, it's almost been a doji from a week standpoint, right? So kind mm -hmm. of a draw. Uh, we don't know where the week is going to end. Um, the the ideal shorting, I don't know whether we'll give it to you or not, would be that the NQ does go on to form an A to B equals CD to the upside, which yes. gets you into the 7555 level, which is the top of the weekly, uh, the top of the daily uh, profile, which has a bearish structure. Um, yeah. And, yeah, that's you know, yeah, that that would be the ideal. Whether or not the market's going to give you ideal or not, you know. <laughs> yeah, still the same question, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But 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 what we know right Thank now you. is we can we can look at those shorter term time frame charts to see the patterns in play, you know. And I say right now the best thing to be watching is probably the hourly chart, the 60 minute chart. Um, and okay. you know, probably in about uh, two hours we'll see who's going to blink. You know, okay. the bulls or the bears. I I don't know which one it is. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate it. Have a lovely weekend.
Thank you, you too. Always great to uh, hear. That's from Maria in uh, New York. We've got Garo on the line. Let's go to uh, Garo out in California. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good. How about you, sir? I am doing uh, very well. Now, we're going to be going to a hard break here, but uh, please uh, hang on the line. Uh, what is it that we're going to take a look at with you today? NQ, Nancy Queen. Okay, you got it. We come back, we're going to take a look at another NQ, this time with Garo in California. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to close out the show with Gar the show with Garo in California. Garo, were you talking about the NQ futures contract? Um, there's something I want to ask you. It's a very stupid question. I hope no you don't laugh at me. No um, such thing. What is NQ? I cannot bring the chart of NQ. Wherever I click on NQ, is only just blank. Yes, it should be. Uh, the NQ is the Nasdaq Equity Futures contract. So. Um, and, and what we trade there, we trade the quarterly time frame charts out there. So like the ES mini, uh, so the S&P futures contract, the symbol would be ES. Uh, for the NASDAQ equity futures contract, it is NQ. So if your system gets that data uh, service, if you're getting the CBOE uh, data service out there, uh, the Globex, I should say, uh, data service, uh, type in NQZ18. 
see if that comes up. Now, your software might look for some other type of symbol, maybe something in front of the N or, you know, the, um, for example, uh, the Thinkorswim platform uses a backslash in front of the oh, futures oh. contracts out there. Um, e you know, if you if you wanted to see the uh, the equity futures contracts, you could always get a and not pay for the data feed. I believe you can uh, get one of those free accounts from Nadex and have access to it. I yeah. think it might be real time. Um, but uh, but you know your parabolic SAR system will I'm sure work on that as well and uh... <laughs> yeah, you're right NQ Z18 now it brings me that 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 I can see that is seven thousand one hundred thirty eight dollars yes. seventy five cents that's the perfect. one we're talking perfect hey by the way there is not we are this is a team you and I Maria everybody in the den we're a team there's no there's no there's no silly questions out there period. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, we're, after, we're all here to learn. We're all here to learn from trading. I didn't know what is NQ. So that's you okay. Keep talking about NQ every day, but I didn't know what is NQ. I'm just, I'm just listening like a dummy. Yeah. Well, but anyways, nope. I learned something today. Thanks. That's great. Hey, have a great, have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, folks. Everybody, have a great weekend as well. We'll see you on a magnificent, marvelous Monday. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.